today I would like to show you topic uh, of small language models and tell you about a RAC pipeline that we implemented on edge devices. It would not happen without our team. Uh, so let me shortly introduce Pavel and Marcin, uh, both are senior engineers and our project manager, Artur, who was very helpful during the entire process. Okay, what are small language models? I think we can say they are just uh, way smaller counterparts of these big, large language models. Um, and there are two areas uh, that where they can be implemented. One is edge devices uh, or like low resources environment. Uh, this is our case. But the second interesting case is like for researchers who want to quickly iterate with uh, own idea um, upgrading LLMs to training from scratch is feasible for uh, small language models. Uh, we also have uh, client queries uh, for these models on the devices, and that is, that is why we dive into uh, the topic. Okay, so our goal was to implement a retrieval augmented generation pipeline utilizing this uh, small language model on edge devices on the smartphones. And uh, today we would go a bit through tech stack that we uh, were uh, digging, that we were using, how we stick things together. Uh, I would tell you about difficulties that we encountered during that process, especially on Android and C++ side. Uh, performance wise, the, the, the most interesting question is like what speed can be achieved on these edge devices? How big models can we fit into the memory? And what is the quality of uh, that models? Um, that small models. Okay, um, the biggest benefit, I think, first and foremost, is a cost reduction. Uh, it is the case for many companies that they uh, pay a lot for um, cloud services. And uh, if we can successfully push uh, that models and make them useful on edge devices, that means zero cloud provider costs. Another benefit is uh, offline. Uh, this can work without internet access, so it's good for places when have a weak uh, internet uh, uh, range access. And the last one uh, that we can consider is data privacy. We don't have to send a sensitive data to our cloud providers. We can process everything on a device itself. Okay, so our tech stack. Um, was divided into two parts into production and inference it was done on android with c++ uh, here we utilize llama cpp as inference engine more about that later bird cpp was our embedder embedding model um files for indexing for search open blast was needed some implementation of blast was needed to run files at all and conan is possible to run on android and uh, works really smoothly for building dependencies. Uh, models that we consider are in range from one to three billion parameters, and they are namely Phi2, Gemma, and Tiny Lama. And on the research side, uh, we use uh, Python, where we do evaluations uh, for scores uh, of these models and do some offline processing steps. Uh, Raga's pipeline, uh, sorry, uh, RAG pipeline, uh, we implemented is divided into two parts. One is happening offline, uh, outside of the device. And um, this is about chunking document for smaller pieces. And for each piece calculating embedding, this is our database uh, of uh, chunked documents. And our on the edge application starts from loading this database uh, into the memory. Then we have a user query, user ask uh, some question. With a retrieval, uh, we uh, retrieve a context from uh, having the embeddings from the database. And then this textual context plus user, user query goes into the LLM. Uh, this is this response generation blob here. This is the heart of that solution. And this generates a final answer. OK, about Android uh, limitations, uh, the support uh, for C++ libraries is limited when we spoke about um, large language models. Uh, in general, um, the, 
this is not so friendly environment as PyTorch plus hugging face. Sometimes we need to implement things from scratch, uh, or sometimes we have uh, access to libraries that offers, for example, FICE offers uh, searching and indexing, but it lacks some features uh, we would like to use, like sparse vector search. Um, Android has also constraints. Uh, and one of the biggest constraints is uh, it forces us to run application in one single process. Um, and also sometimes it's problematic with all dependencies. There is no clean way to, um, to, to build some old dependencies. What inference engine uh, do we use? Here I need to tell uh, you that um, this is area that uh, evolving really fast, uh, growing is growing really fast, and it's completely not yet mature. Uh, we can talk about few possible inference engines that can be used uh, right now. Uh, the biggest and I think most recommended from our side would be Llama CPP. It supports many models, uh, but uh, it's a bit uh, messy in the PR and code. It's growing, it's just growing too fast. Uh, there is a huge community around it uh, and incoming more and more people and more and more PRs. Uh, and, but this is not also a library you can use for Android and Edge devices, but it is not, um, it lacks strict optimization uh, for, for, for Android, for inference. MLC, another library, uh, has a way less community, uh, was more buggy where, when we tested it, it supports less models. Uh, and CNN is the most popular framework on mobile when you maybe code uh, computer vision application. But for LLM, does not seem as a good choice. Some models are reported to be running on that, on that uh, like Llama 7B, but not, mu not much more than that. And it does not support quantization slower than Intuit. Executors, this one seems to be a pricing star. It's not yet mature. Uh, it's not yet production ready, but it's well organized and support Qualcomm kernels, uh, which are blazingly fast in the inference. And Gemma CPP may be worth to mention here, only support Gemma models, uh, a fresh job from Google. We don't have opinion, we didn't test it, this one, uh, but maybe it's a good choice if you decide for Gemma model. The biggest constraint in this entire pipeline is actually the memory of the device. This is because that models are heavy. We limited ourselves to models in a range one to three billion. And yes, it is possible to run models like seven billion, but only for uh, these uh, higher end devices, uh, which has more, more memory and also with lower quantization levels only. Uh, when I say one three billion, I mean uh, that the parameters count. Uh, and for example, Phi2 model, which has close to 3 billion parameters in Q8, weights like four gigabytes. And we need to remember that OS and other stuff, uh, we also need to have not only the model in this memory, but other things too. Um, inference speed wise, uh, it's quite, I think here, uh, please don't to see these results. Uh, it's good enough in real time uh, when these tokens uh, are generated with that speed close to like five or 10. Uh, for newer devices, it's way faster. On these plots, we have like uh, three quantization levels and two devices. Uh, one device with six gigabytes of, of RAM was not able to run a bigger model with Q8 quantization. That's why five of them. And we see that uh, uh, the speed differs from a thread number and from the quantization level. Not always uh, Q8 is the slower one. Sometimes it's the opposite. And uh, like speed wise, the biggest obstacle actually is not a generation time. It's actually the eval prompt time uh, when the context is read by the model. And this is because often these contexts are long. So here I presented work as a scenario where we accept maximum of 1000 tokens. And here uh, you need to wait even 50 seconds before uh, the response would be starting to generate. Uh, so this is this input lag, a uh, long input lag you need to wait sometimes for when there is a lot of uh, text in the context. Okay. Um, 
about the retrieval, um, we consider two models. Uh, we consider more models, uh, but like we decided that the best one, the best performing, are GTA family, and two models that are uh, worth to consider are a large and base a GTE. Uh, the difference here is the memory. Just the bigger is better, but uh, more memory heavy. Uh, Speedwise, they both are. Okay, especially the smaller one is like no complaints here about the speed at all. FP32 is faster here. That may be a bit uh, non-intuitive. And about like um, what results from the retrieval site we can get uh, to get MIP of 0.65 on our data set that we checked it. Um, we concluded that for base model, for the smaller model, we need to, to retrieve top K3 chunks and it would be around 600 tokens. While for the bigger models, it would be uh, two chunks only and 200 tokens to have the same quality, same M MIP. And 200 tokens also means that the next step would be faster. Uh, but we need to have this additional memory to fit that model. The indexing, uh, the files library that we use uh, here is like lookup time is uh, extra, extra fast. Um, indexing is done offline, but even if someone would like to do indexing on the device, it's possible. It's also uh, fast enough. How many documents you can push? A lot. Uh, like 10,000 vectors means like that we can push thousands of pages in 100 memory. So as long as you don't push like entire library of Alexandria, then then it's <laughs> you, you are fine with um, with memory here. Okay, about quality evaluation, uh, how good are these models? We started from a human metric on small handcrafted data set. We checked few models first and got that results. Average score is we just uh, score from zero to one uh, from a human punishing like too long answers or not relevant one. And uh, average hard score here is uh, the same score, just thresholded only for these scores that achieve one zero everything else is rejected. Um, and this uh, may be satisfactory enough for some uh, application, but we try to improve it uh, later with prompt engineering. It would be, uh, let's talk it in a few slides more uh, down the line. Okay, uh, so human evaluation is, um, is a good way to go, but it's a slow process and you cannot check a big data set that way. So our question was, can we utilize automated library like Ragas uh, to help us with that process? And Ragas automates completely that process for you. It allows to calculate uh, many metrics. Amongst them are three that we used. It's answer correctness. How correct is the answer? Faithfulness, how strongly answer is based on a context, how faithfully it's based on the context. And answer relevancy, that's a tricky one. It's a uh, back engineered artificial questions to, to the answer constructed and then these artificial questions are um, checked with a real question, how they relate. Um, the, the most important observation is that uh, as a human score, also the ragas uh, mono, uh, monophically drop uh, with a quantization level. This is what we would expect. And we can see quite good correlation on the blue lines, uh, which are human eval score to the rest lines, which are uh, different Ragas metrics for GPT-4, GPT-3 and a half. Um, th that the correlation is here. So our recommendation would be to test a big data set with a Ragas, but to remember on a human eval on top of that. And human eval is important uh, because when you scroll these answers, uh, you see the models have some flaws. For example, Gemma notoriously answers no answer in the context, despite that the answer was really there. And just inject, uh, injecting this uh, part of prompt, like read carefully, as the answer is always in one or more context, uh, that helps uh, to improve that issue a lot. Similarly, like uh, Gemma always started answering with sure, blah, 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 blah. Then just inject, injecting prompt, do not use sure word at the beginning of your answer. 
uh, and this completely disappear. So uh, this way, by applying this, uh, uh, this, this prompts that hint model to perform better, plus uh, some prompt searching on a small scale, uh, we achieve uh, improvements from the baseline. And it is on this Ragas metrics uh, improvement uh, by score points uh, I highlighted here on a green. You can see it. Okay, um, this is the user experience in real time. Um, so we type uh, the question, then we need to wait a bit. Not that long, so probably not the context was not long. And we have a response. This is how our application on the edge uh, device is working. The model here is probably fee uh, model. And yeah, we have answer. This is maybe one once again, we type the question, enter. Then this is this input lag, we need to wait. And the answer is, uh, the, the model is generating the answer. And you can see this uh, speed of the model um, uh, on your own eyes. Okay, about uh, this topic uh, of small language models, uh, the area is evolving really fast, uh, both from engineering side, uh, when I need to mention again, this executor plus plus Qualcomm, uh, it's like it uh, gives hundreds of times faster inference uh, for computer vision models. It's not yet bring for large language models, but on the time when, when, when it came, uh, I would expect uh, speed ups for, for this inference of small models. Uh, interesting research directions like uh, going even lower uh, with things like uh, one bit LLM. It's not even quantization here. They train it from scratch uh, to keep awaits in a bit more than one bit. It's uh, plus they do activations and calculation uh, without matrix multiplication, but just using addition operation to speed things up. Uh, Mixture of experts. I'm a big fan of coarse grain sparsity when we don't have to activate every weight during the inference, um, but we can activate some narrow path that speeds things up. Here does not save memory, but but at least speed things up. Um, we have a Mamba, uh, which is a fresh uh, research thing, and uh, it's about moving from quadratic attention mechanism into more like linear recurrent thing. Mixture of expert Mamba from a Polish group, also interesting combination of two techniques. About the uh, uh, sparsity, we can also talk about uh, fine grain sparsity on a small scale inside the kernels to keep less weights, maybe to do even inference faster. That is not what, for example, Lama CPP implemented yet. Uh, and uh, some ideas like draft plus verifiers when we use fast lightweight model to produce many tokens as, at once, we call them draft. And then verifier, which is a heavy part, but can be this time run in parallel because we have token propositions and uh, can verify these this drafts and reject, uh, accept tokens as long as the first token uh, does not match. Okay, here I pasted uh, these references uh, to the link for those who are interested to dive more into the details. And uh, thank you very much.